be there in a minute. Hey, hey, and a cup of coffee wouldn't go amiss. I've never slept through that alarm before. Yeah, well, last night was a late one. Are you sure I can't get you any breakfast? Nah, I've got to run. We don't get there by ten. I'm going to kiss that job goodbye. So I'll see you later, then? Yeah, I don't see why not. Thanks for coming back. We sorted now, then. What do you think? This says they're out of... Sorry. Right, well, uh, I've got to go. Bye. Not bad for an old crone, well past her sell-by date. It's real class. I mean, even the bogs, they're all like plate glass and running water. We should go on that. Me and Scott haven't been clubbing for ages. Yeah, you said Scott was invited. I did. Yeah, you can't trust yourself alone with me, eh? See you later. What does he want? Coffee, strangely enough. He used up all the milk. So buy some more. And you should have seen what he left in the sink this morning. He's got to go. You can't chuck him out for that. And he can't take his eyes off of you. And when we go to bed, I can't help but think of him on the other side of the wall listening. You telling me you feel threatened? <sighs> I just want you to myself, that's all. Let's go out tonight, just the two of us. Oh, well, I'm not sure I can get away. Oh, you mean like yesterday? Well, I can't exactly turn work down, can I? Well, it's a good job I've got Sid for company then, isn't it? What time do you call this? Alarm didn't go off. The length some people go to for a free pint. We're not all mercenary little gits like you, Sydney. So you've turned down a few grand's work for a night of love with Granny Spice. I hope it was worth it. Stuff work round here to keep us going. <clears throat> and she's not Granny Spice, all right. But she is a granny, all right. It's like a wine. The more mature that women are, the more interesting and complex they become. If it came down to a choice between interesting and complex and a night with Chloe, I know what I'd choose. Yeah, but that won't happen, will it? Because she wouldn't shake a stick at you. Yeah. Now, if you can tear yourself away, let's go. You've not been out since three o'clock. I thought it'd be home hours ago. It's a waste of time and all. We lost her and the car. We got a couple of bars of chocolate. I'm sorry. It's all right, it happens, it's part of the job. No, I mean, I'm sorry about last night. I should have talked to you about the fostering when I first thought about it. It's wrong of me to spring it on you like that. Well, those bombshells go. I do know it's a lot for you to take on all at once. I just... I just kind of thought that when we had children, they'd be our own, you know. This doesn't mean we won't. I just had a lot on at the moment, and what was Zoe, and, and when... when a sorted workout. Then I'll think about it. This morning's surgery's marked up. The notes, Atkinson's farm, where are they? You didn't ask me for them. I did earlier. If you had, I would have got them out, wouldn't I? Or have you delegated yet more of my work to Paddy? I'm sorry about yesterday. I only told Paddy because they complained you were late. The Atkinson's notes, where are they? Good morning, Zoe. You all right? Why do you ask? No, oh, just, well, you've been a bit tired lately. I'm fine. Fine. You sure? I'm in surgery. It's just those antidepressants you've been taking. Yeah. If... Uh, path lab for you, Paddy. If they're not suiting you, then you should go back to the doctor. Hello? Are you saying he can't have children? No. I mean, I don't know. You know, you can confide in me if he does have a problem. I don't think you understand. Oh, believe me, I do. But to get engaged and not tell you he's not quite up to scratch. He didn't. I always wondered why Mandy ended up playing away. I suppose a marriage can survive without the physical side of things. But to deprive you of having your own children... It, it's not like that, Mrs Hope. Then why even think about fostering? They're all disturbed, aggressive, difficult. If they weren't, they wouldn't be in care, would they? I mean, you only have to look at the trouble Andy's caused Jack Sugden. I'm really sorry to land on an ounce like this. I just didn't want to discuss this over the phone. What is it? I wasn't entirely straight with you the other day about Zoe. Well, out with it. 
Well, she was really stressed before she went away and she's been even worse since she came back. What do you mean, worse? <sighs> she's very tired, very distracted. She's just not been herself and something is getting to her. Oh. Should have thought it's next week, isn't it? What? Our dad, he died five years ago, next week. She never finds this time of year easy. Right. But, well, I, I thought there must have been something because she's been drinking again and it just doesn't mix with the medication. What medication? No, no, and no again! It's not doing any good just sitting in a bank, is it? Yes, it is. It's lying there all safe and sound, earning interest. But if we put it to work for us, like invested it... I'll just call me broker. We've got enough money to do that house up. So you found somewhere to buy? Yes. No. We see this lovely house last week up by the lake. Oh, it was gorgeous. Stone, quite big. Quite derelict. How derelict? Looks like it hasn't been lived in for ages. <sighs> Sounds expensive. <laughs> oh, I could just see me and Marlon in it, though. Roses in the garden, smoke coming out the chimney. Rain coming through the holes in the roof. You just don't want us to buy a place of our own, do you? Even if it was for sale. Which it isn't! We wouldn't even be able to afford to fix the window frames. Yeah, and if we carry on like this, we'll never find anywhere. Ever! I'd start brushing up on your DIY if I were you. So, he never made it to Halifax. He was so sweet. Came round last night, said he'd been thoughtless upsetting me. Mm? Told you so. He was so thoughtful, so sensitive, so unlike a man, actually. <laughs> When's he moving in? Mac and I are just chips that pass in the night. Only he's dropped anchor here for a while. Hmm. As long as you're happy with that. Happy? I'm ecstatic. A toy boy at me beck and call, and he won't even expect me to wash his socks. <laughs> What's wrong with her? Is it serious? Yeah, but she told me in confidence. You're scaring me. Well, I think she needs more support, so... She's on antidepressants. Antidepressants? Yeah, and I don't think they're suiting her, and I don't think they mix with alcohol. How much is she drinking? A rough estimate, far too much. I'll go and see her. Listen, don't let her know that you know. If she finds out I've been telling tales, she'll hit the roof, and, and things are bad enough at work as it is. What about that, then? About 400 visitors so far. And you still haven't told her? What the eye don't see. You do realise it won't be pretty when she does find out. Have you got a death wish or what? It's mind-boggling, isn't it? The poor caller that work can't take their eyes off my Betty. But why? It's not exactly riveting, is it? Well, I think he spent the night with Diane Blackstock because he looked absolutely worn out. Pathetic. Only weeks to go. We're nowhere near our fundraising target. Then we'll have to start thinking tactically. Which is why I've decided we should lead by example. I have taken the liberty of writing out a business cheque to the Jubilee Fund. What? If your name as a dignitary and prominent local citizen is up there as a donor, then other businesses are bound to follow. Uh, yeah, well, I suppose you're right. These celebrations are to be the jewel in my chain of office. <laughs> and if you're seen to be making a substantial contribution... The sponsors will have to dig even deeper. You are such a marvel, dear lady. <laughs> um, do you mind if I join you? Um, there's a meeting next week to discuss the Jubilee celebrations. I'm counting on your attendance. I've had a few ideas along those lines myself. And we need to put our backs into this fundraising. Gloria and I have already started the ball rolling. But ours is, hopefully, the first contribution of many. I suppose I could ask the WI to arrange a bring and buy. Oh, coffee, please, Chloe. I honestly thought that was the end of the road for me and men. Well, me and men under pensionable age. <laughs> Diane, you're much too hard on yourself. You're a very attractive woman. <laughs> and if you spend much more time in that cafe, you'll take root. I like a bit of company, that's all. Oh, it's all very well for you. Sat on your backside, being waiting on hand and foot, but me... Oh, I've not stopped all morning. Oh, well, you went about time to yak on phone to Edna for 20 minutes, then. Or your sister for 10. Now, what's your favourite programme with your 11s in between? Not tonight, Sydney. <clears throat> I'm busy. What, with Granny Spice? Hey, don't knock it. Any port in a storm. Looks like it's another night in with the luscious Chloe, then. I'm within a nicer crack in that one. Mm. In your dreams, pal. We were out last night, just me and her. I tell you, she's gagging for it. 
She's getting more and more antsy that she's not getting the attention at home. He only has to let her down once more and I'm in there. She must have been thinking about it ever since we had them kids round. That, that's the sort of half-baked idea I'd expect from Tricia. You know, Emily doesn't do half-baked, does she? She's absolutely serious. She's been to see social services, everything. What was she going to tell you when the first kids arrived? Well, I don't know. She's just doing her research, isn't she? I'm getting her facts straight. Paddy. Paddy, is it because you and Emily can't? You know... You know... <laughs> People foster children for all sorts of reasons, no, Marvel. listen. You need to talk. You know where I am, OK? Right? Thought I'd drop in. See how you are. Why? Because we haven't caught up for a while. So how are you? I'm fine. You look shattered. I'm going for my lunch. All oh, right. Bye then, Nicola. See you later. I don't know why you put up with her attitude. It's Dad's anniversary next week. I want you to come over and spend the day with me. I'm working. Come for dinner. Why? Because it's a difficult day for both of us. It might help us if we spend some time together. Oh, yes, nice and cosy. You, me and Charity, remembering our dead father. I don't want you to spend the evening on your own. I went on holiday on my own. You didn't even notice. I think you've been spending too much time alone. I've also heard that you've been drinking too much. Who said that? I've just heard you've been drinking. People talking about me. Now, you might not want to hear this, but I think you may have a problem. My life is my own. I do what I want with. Just keep out of my business. I only want to help. Go away. Get out. I don't want to hear this. All makes sense. Your alarm bell should have sounded with the drink driving. Please leave. I don't want you here. Drinking won't solve anything, Zoe. You'll still have your problems when you're sober. Look what happened to Dad. Oh, so I'm an alcoholic now, am I? Like father, like daughter? I think you should leave. I owe it to him to look after you. How do you think he'd feel watching you do this to yourself? After you saw what it did to him? Why don't you come home with me tonight? No. No, not you. Well, I can't take any of my stuff doing this. Get away from me! Just leave me alone! So you're still enjoying all the fluffy little animals? It was great, till she got back from lesbian summer camp. Well, she doesn't fancy it, then. Makes it obvious she can't stand me being there. I hope you don't upset her. No, nothing. It's not my fault that she's so hungover when she gets in in the morning. She can't do a job properly. I sort of presumed we'd end up with kids sooner or later, but... <laughs> yeah, doing it like this, though, it, it's like... It's like buying a mattress, you know? You want your own, not somebody else's. <laughs> what are you on about? It's an analogy. Do you, want, do you want to take on other people's children or not? We've got the space, we've got the money, and how many kids have got an animal hospital next door? It's a big responsibility, Paddy. I know, and then it's the end of just the two of us, isn't it? No more romantic nights by the fire, and... But if it's what Emily wants, and I love her... <sighs> if Emily's feeling broody, I'd play it safe, mate. Buy her a puppy. <laughs> House with the garden up by the lake. Aye. Right. Whose is it? The weather all girls. Stunning day, were in there, dear. Well, where are they now? Elsie's gone. Edith lived there as long as I can remember. Lost her young man in war, poor lass. So is she dead too? I'm not sure. You want to call her Ashley? He'd be able to tell you whether she's in churchyard or not. Yeah. 
Nicola. I thought we'd done a deal. You're not having that money back. Forget about that. I want to know if you've had any problems with Zoe. Why do you want me to start? Well, she seems a bit stressed. She's stressing Paddy out the way she is with clients. Which is what exactly? Look, I know she's your sister. I mean, we all like a drink, but she's a vet, and when it starts interfering with her work. Still, it's nothing to do with me, is it? I'm just the receptionist. Ah, uh, the moment of your time? Make it snappy. As I'm sure you're aware, the Jubilee celebrations are imminent, and we're planning a village extravaganza to mark the occasion. Not now, Eric. Um, we're looking for sponsors. And as the mainstay of our local economy... Some other time. As PR opportunities go, it's a gift. And it's also a chance to offer your benevolence to the community. Let's give something back. I don't Looks give a... like we'll have to take Swain's haulage up on their very generous offer. Yes, well, it's a pity to hand over such a high-profile event to your biggest business rival. Still, if local opinion matters so little to you. Talk to Charity. She'll sort it. Ooh. Told you. You're irresistible when you're assertive. <laughs> Answer the phone, shall I? Afternoon surgery. You've been ringing for how long? Yeah, sorry to keep you waiting. Hello, Ashley. Have you got a minute? Hello. I've been doing some research into local history. It's really fascinating, all that historical stuff, isn't it? I have been intending to organise an evening. There are a few other keen historians in the village. Oh, lovely. Um, only I'm particularly interested in the Weatherall family. You know, the house up by the lake. Oh, yes, Edith. Now, there was a character. Oh, she's dead, isn't she? Oh, far from it. Uh, the house got too much for her, so she moved to the nursing home in Connelton. Oh, she must be very old, then. Uh, in her 80s, I think. Now, uh, about the local history evening. What night would be best for you? So what's this, then? What does it look like? Well, I've paid you rent. I've got rights. Not anymore, you haven't. What's going on? What have I done? I happened to hear you mouthing off about my girlfriend in the pub earlier on. Oh, I was just having a laugh. You, know, you don't make jokes about Clubby. You understand? You're just scared. Scared your bird takes one look at me every morning and realises what she's missing. Sorry, that's her flipping phone. I thought we'd have ham salad for tea. I've got us a bottle of wine too. I'm all right. About Miss Foster. Don't worry about it. It was just an idea. No, but I've not thought about anything else all day. I know you're not interested. It's all right. And the more that I have thought about it. You don't have to pretend to me. It doesn't matter. I'm all right. Hey. Come and sit down. When I was a kid, I had everything. I had the best bike, the best stereo, private schools. I even had my own house at university, and I mean, I had the works. But the one thing that I couldn't have, that I really wanted, was love from my mum. So maybe we can give some of that love to some poor kid that's never known it. Maybe. Maybe. 
it's ghoulish. You're like one of them old women who used to hang around the guillotine knitting. Well, you never know. She's an old lady. She might be desperate to sell it. What's she going to do with the money? Thunder World crew. She's stuck in a nursing home, for heaven's sake. Look, Marlon, we'd be doing her a favour. The home's only a few miles away. We could go and see her tomorrow. So, sorry, so let me, let me just get... We go to a nursing home to talk to an old lady that we don't know and who doesn't know us to force her to sell her home. Class idea, Tricia. Sorry to interrupt, but I'm on my own out here. Trouble with you is, you've got no imagination. Oh. Why aren't you at work? I finished early. And I thought we could go out. Oh. Well, well let me wash this chip fat out of my hair and I'll be with you. Uh, where do you fancy? Anywhere that isn't here. Oh, Sid was going on about a place in Leeds. That sounded good. Where? Can't remember the name. Sid? Well, uh, he's gone. What do you mean he's gone? Well, he found somewhere else. Cheaper. Said it was more his sort of place. He seemed happy this morning. Do you know, I think there's a girl involved. Oh, ignorant pig. Thought we were mates. Well, it's not a problem, is it? Well, he could have bothered to say goodbye. Oh, well, he's just that sort of bloke. Well, right, we'll go get that shower then. Well, I thought Sims one our own. I could join you. Ooh. Are you sure this is what you want? More than sure. I'm surer than sure. Don't feel you have to rush into it. Well, you said there's loads of formal stuff to go through. Lots. So the sooner we get started, the sooner we can get things moving. The social services say they need to come out. See what sort of people we are and where we live. Well, we can't fail, can we? I mean, look at the place. The two of us rattling around in it, room for hundreds of kids. Oh, we can have big family dinners around the table. A proper Christmas tree with loads of presents under it. <laughs> Little muddy wellies at the back door. <laughs> oh, no. I'm going to be a foster dad, and you're going to be a foster mum. We've got a lot to give you and me. We have, and we will, and... I love you. I love you. Thank you, Paddy. Thank you with all my heart. <laughs> <laughs>